many of you try to grow sweet corn in your backyard garden. And tonight we're gonna to talk a little bit about something that maybe you didn't want in your sweet corn, but as a plant pathologist, I'm gonna show you a way to get it so that you could enjoy a special delicacy, the corn truffle, corn smut, or what some people refer to as wheat aloche. Now with corn, our sweet corn, just so you know, every kernel on that corn cob is pollinated through the silks of the corn. So every, every piece of silk runs to a kernel. Now with our, our smut spore, uh, the Ustilago mitis spore, when it's coming in, it's going in place of that pollen. So in corn, when we're trying to produce corn smut, which many of you may think is crazy, when we're trying to do that, we're gonna try to beat that pollen. So to do that, we're gonna take away all of our tassels, we're gonna remove our tassels, because when that pollen gets to the embryo that's developing in the ear, it forms a little abscission layer, and that will block our smut spore from being able to infect that embryo. So the other thing we did is we grew a susceptible sweet corn hybrid. So I just selected some, this is Golden Cross Bantam. Uh, we know it's susceptible to moderately resistant in some uh, rankings, uh, but we feel this would be a good host for our corn smut. For our inoculum portion of this, or the, the source of our disease, I just went out and collected some smutted corn ears from a commercial corn field last fall. And here you can see that mass of of uh, dusty material on there, and those are all spores. It's been estimated by some that there's over 300 billion spores in one of those smut galls. So it's pretty easy to see that we could have a lot of inoculum. We're gonna do this so hopefully you'd be able to do it in your backyard garden, and we're just gonna take some of our teleospores, we're gonna put those all over our corn plants, and then once we have silks present, we're gonna actually take some of these and mix them up, and we're gonna shoot them inside the ear and also to get into that ear silk directly. And hopefully we're gonna get that development and growth of those uh, pathogenic types so that we can have a developed ear or mostly an ear of corn smut. It's been about three weeks since we started this process and spread our inoculum and we used some different methods. We did the, the first one where we spread just the spores, the teleospores. We took some injection and injected into the actual shoot silks uh, of the ears. We maintained no pollen in this crop. So we've cut all the tassels off. Uh, that's been critical to get the smut to develop because once that pollen enters that uh, silk, then the, the smut spore won't be able to make it there and it will not infect the kernel. Uh, so with that, and, and now looking at what we've had happen and it's continuing to develop, we've had some really good development of smut. So with this, we've been very successful in uh, actually home gardening our corn truffles so now we can take these uh, and, and harvest them. Uh, we can take the individual pieces off of the ear and we can use those for Cuida Loche. So something that's been really fun this summer for me just as a little side project in the backyard and sharing with you and hoping that you may look at corn smut or call them corn truffles from now on a little different from now on.